Celebrating the life of Sharon Stewart, a vivacious and authentic young woman born the baby girl to mother Margie Terry and father John Durham on July 19, 1964 in Atlanta, Georgia at the Grady Memorial Hospital. Sharon Stewart, this ambitious go-getter, sought to establish and landed a position as the right-to-know training liaison at the Human Resource Administration in New York City, and also landed another position, worked two careers as the customer service manager at the flagship Macy's store located on 34th Street in New York. Life's challenges will come, but it doesn't mean the end. It's an opportunity for a new beginning. We celebrate the life of Sharon Stewart, a beautiful, beautiful woman who touched the lives of so many.
place in Georgia. So we only did a couple of programs. So those who do not get any programs this evening, please feel free to give the funeral home a call or Chante a call and we'll make sure that you get a PDF copy via email. We thank you again for your cooperation.
household of the word. Amen. We have the Old Testament scripture read by Reverend Reginald Hall, and the New Testament read by Reverend A.C. Pedway. From the first division of the Psalms, Psalms 24 reads on this wise. The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world, world and they that dwell therein. For he founded it upon the sea, and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands. And a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto man, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door. And the King of Lord. Amen. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting door. And the King of Glory shall come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of Glory.
it's all right. You know, I'm home now. I can do what I want to do. All right. And she's home now. Yeah. Right, we can have church like we want to have. sincere appreciation and gratitude to the love that was bestowed upon her. We'd like to thank Universal Temple of God yes. and give yourself a round of prayer. Yes. And Bible Faith Tabernacle yes. for demonstrating what ministry really is. Amen. Amen. For the prayers, the intercession of my mom and family, we again want to thank you. To her HRA and Macy's family that called and visited her during her time of sickness, thank you for thinking of her and sacrificing her time to be near. To the kind of words that were said in her beautiful cards, voicemails, and texts, they were not overlooked. Again, we want to thank you. Two people who are placing her like by Jehovah, Carolyn. Words cannot express how much we thank you for your sacrifices, for my mother and our family. You both are the epitome of heaven sent. Our aunts and uncles who band together to be there for their sister, thank you for coming together on one accord and demonstrating such love and compassion over our shade. Yes. Last but not least, two other angels who were placed in our lives and blessed us tremendously. Miss Amelia Now and Miss Lisa Dozier, thank you for helping me to strengthen and be so instrumental in the celebration and honor of my mom's homecoming. And to everyone I didn't mention, again, we want to thank you. Amen. Amen. I want to call my father out to be some more support. Daddy, would you come? Amen. mother, Marge Terry, and father, John Dunham, on July 19, 1964, in Atlanta, Georgia, at Gritty Memorial Hospital. A time to live. At the tender age of two, the Southern Belle and her family relocated from Atlanta, Georgia, to the heart of Brooklyn, New York. Who would have thought that this Georgia peach would take on the Big Apple with such zeal and enthusiasm? To know Sharon is to acknowledge that success wasn't an option, but a divine driven force for her. Her beginning success was started at elementary school, PS 316, then followed with her completion as a high school graduate at Washington Urban. This ambitious go-getter sought to establish a career and landed with a position as the right to know training liaison at Human Resources Administration with the GSS Health and Safety Department. Again, success was never an option, but a driven force for her, which is why to find out that she had taken on a second career as a customer service manager at Macy's flagship store on 34th Street shouldn't come as a surprise. At both jobs, relationships turned into family bonds amongst her coworkers. Family was the most important thing to her aside from anything that would be attributed as success. She was a mother of two, her son being the eldest, James Stewart, and her daughter, me, the youngest, Ashanti Terry. With no rule book on how to be the perfect parent, she did the best she knew how. Amen. Her children were the core of her heart. Her biggest desire was to know 
that they both understood how deeply she loved them. Well, I'm convinced that James and Ashanti will have a deeper appreciation with her value as a mother, who left a priceless example, which was this. Life's challenges will come, but it doesn't mean it's the end. It's an opportunity for a new beginning. A time for every purpose under the sun. Nothing gets our attention the way bad and pain does. In his divine wisdom, Jesus uses our pain to call us into a more vibrant and focused relationship with him. Sharon heard of Jesus calling more clearly during her battle with cancer than at any other time in her life. Jesus' gift to her in the midst of her painful affliction was this liberating revelation. In the valley of dark shadows, human sympathies, even when the intentions are well-meaning, cannot help. Sharon became convinced that she desperately needed the unfailing love of Jesus. A time to die. With such an aggressive fight against cancer, Sharon held on to what we perceive as the bitter end. On Sunday, November 8, 2015, at 2.30 p.m., Jesus, in his love and mercy, put an end to her infirmities and welcomed her to the beginning of a new life of eternal peace. She peacefully surrendered to the Lord's final call, Sleep, my child. I am is with you. And I have just where I want you. A time to mourn. Matthew 12, verses 46 through 50 speaks about the true family of Jesus. The significance that Jesus highlighted was that family is not just about mere blood relations. Rather, if you, if you do the will of our Heavenly Father, then we are marked as its family. I want to say if you demonstrate your love towards Sharon, she considers you family. Not because of mere blood genetic makeup, the DNA, but because of the precious blood of Jesus that makes us brothers and sisters in Christ. So to her mother and father, son and daughter, sisters and brothers, and nephews, aunts, uncles, her HRA family, her Macy's family, Macon Street's family, to the fathers of her children, James Stewart Sr., and my father, Tacoma Valle, and all others who exuded their love toward her. We will miss her daily.
Sharon always had, if you knew Sharon, she always had smile. Yes. Yes. Sharon. Yes. I can say that it is well with my soul. Amen. Amen. Love my sister dearly. God planted her deeper in my heart within the last month or so. And through all of the pain, being in the hospital visiting, being at the house, periodically sharing the still raise her hands and say, God, I trust you. It's easy to trust God when you don't have problems, when you don't have pain, when things are going on good in life. Yeah, God, I trust you. But when you're hurting, she never had a pain that I've never seen before. There was times that she had to use her oxygen. But she still put up her hands and said, God, I trust you. That will resonate in my life and in my heart. God, I thank you for giving, us, giving her to us for 51 tender years. I thank you for blessing her with a daughter that is a pillar for God. <laughs> my niece is a diamond. So my two minutes are almost stop, so I'm going to reference what your wonderful pastor. Oh my God, I love him. If I lived in New York, this is where I would be. I live in Pennsylvania. <laughs> but, um, Thank you all for coming, finding a moment to take out your day to come just pay your respects to Sharon and to the family. Um, as in her, we love you. Thank you for coming and God, thank you for blessing her and sister. Sleep well until we see you again. To make sure that I was going to remain focused, Took time out to pray about what to say, and it came to me that each person in there who had that blessing to experience Sharon today has a mental snapshot of her. Some of us have more than others, but only God has another. Yet there is one mental shot we all have. That's the picture of the woman who had a style for her. Yes. Yes. We all had that shot. Yes. Uh, ever seen Sharon walk out the street without her hair done? <laughs> Makeup? No. Get just right. No. She rocked vibrant colors and clothing combinations that made you go, wow. Yes. Yes. Her personality was easy and smooth. But her attention to fashion gave her the wow factor. He gave us a peek into the woman that said there was a lot more to shout than that guy. Now, for my last minute, I want to pull out one of my personal snapshots, which includes all of all the things that I experienced with Sharon, the one thing that's so sticky and compelling is when she said, T, we did it! A <laughs> big full of pride and joy, she literally yelled it out. T, we did it. It's only been with the passage of time that I've come to realize that moment, that statement, has far deeper meaning then at Shantae's high school graduation because that's when it was uttered. What we did lives in the person of our daughter. Yes. Amen. As you can see, Ashanti, you are clearly every bit your mother's daughter. Yes. Sharon and I had this inside joke that even if we broke up because things happened in life, she's going to haunt me <laughs> and I was going to haunt her. <laughs> and this is how it happened. You just never know. Sean didn't come home to the Bronx, ring the bell because she was carrying her luggage and I could go and open the door. And when I opened that door, 
I literally had to jump back because I thought it was shit. <laughs> and I had to call her. I called her and let her know. So you really want to harm me. <laughs> There's so much more to say, but we, we don't have the luxury of time. One last thing. When we say, when Sharon said, T, you did it, I want mom, pop, I want you to listen. That's what we did. And it was Which bleeds the heart in agony and pain 
However, remember the words of God. Be faithful until death, and I will give thee the crown of life. Revelation 2 and 10. These words of belief, hope, and promise serve as a beacon light to the mind and heart of Sister Sharon Stewart, to the Reverend family. Be it further resolved that on this 12th day in November of the year of 2015 of our Lord, that a copy of the resolution will be given to the family and a copy kept from the file at this church. Humbly submitted by Overseer Tracy Henderson, Senior Pastor in the Universal Temple Church Family, Brooklyn, New York. She was so special. Um, there's one thing I got to say about her. When when I used to get up to sing or in the choir, we would get up to sing Bible Faith. One thing I loved about her more than most, she would not hesitate to worship. She didn't believe in holding back from worship. As soon as you started the song, she was like, I don't know about the rest of them, but I know where I'm supposed to be. And uh, we're going to dearly miss her. Shanti, that's my sister. You know, you already know where to call. We're here for you. We're here for you. I've had some good days. I've had some good
tonight for the next few minutes. I have an awesome task speaking over her tonight. In the last four years, all of these home goings that I have done, I can attest to the fact that they don't get any easy. Sharon, I knew her just for a little while. I didn't know her as long as I knew her father. And most of you sitting out in the audience. And it just goes to prove what I often say, that you don't have to do a whole lot to be an impression on somebody. You don't have to give jury, if you want to give me stuff, you know, I'll wear it in good faith. You know, if you want to give me some money, God knows I'll take all that you want to shower on me. Uh -huh. But uh, if you don't give me nothing but some love, love goes a long way. I was praying for Sharon long before I even knew what she had going on. And the Lord just directed it to me. I'm telling you, she made such a great impact on me. I wanted her to be healed because I wanted her testimony. Amen. You know what saying? Well, Amen. Amen. She made a great impact and just only in a short time on my wife and my daughter. And you know, they went up to see her and, and boom, the rest was history. And the other day, as a matter of fact, on Sunday, John called me. The pastor can't go in the house yet. Come on over. And she came. When I got there, the she was just, you could just see rest all over her. From the, from the last couple of times that I went to visit her, uh, first time, she didn't even know I was coming. I just told her, I'm coming. And I just shot on from here on over there. And when I turned the corner in the house, she she brightened up like a light bulb. I said, gosh, girl, it's only me. She said, no. <laughs> she, said, she kept trying to tell me your words. It's just amazing to me. It gave me strength to hold on. And I want you to know sometimes somebody just needs to hear some kindness coming up out of you. Y'all can see me. Then the second time, the first time I felt in the hall, we were able to see her, and she was trying to tell me about this day. She said, Pastor, uh, and you know, I was looking around the house, and it's just a beautiful house, all of the woodwork and everything was just in the back of the and stuff. I'm like, wow, she got it going on. She was trying to say, I'm getting ready to go to that Mother Margie was uh, got a new home. And uh, and I told her, I said, I ain't come up here to talk about that. Uh, we're going to live. And when I said that, she brightened up again. I'm like, all right, this girl is easy to talk to today. <coughs> and went to the hospital and prayed with her. And, and she said, I'm coming out of here. And so, you know, I'm learning to read between the lines. And she said, I'm coming home. I'm going home. And I'm like, all right. You know, I, hey, I applaud you, baby. Come on. You know, come out of here. We're going to come out of this looking good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Looking better than we did when we went in. And so, all day today, I was, well, yesterday, last night, and I was trying to find something to say. And then I thought about what you had said, Mother Mark, because when you throw it out there, it just hung in my head. She got a new address. She got a new address. 
we prayed that she was healed. And God answered our prayer. And the church, we've got to learn how to accept what God allows us. Uh, I'm sure if you ask Sharon now, come on back, she said, <laughs> she got some few choice words for you. You must be out of your mind. And, and so I thought about that. And I, I played with that a little while. And this is the results of what I came up with. You know, I seen her in her pain. I seen her after a restless night, John. But then when I see her again, just touch somebody and say, wait. No, no, no. Come on. Come on. Y'all wake up in here. <laughs> This, I wanted something else for right, her. Right, right. But uh, tonight, I heard in my spirit, yeah. now just the person that you sit next to, yeah. just look at them, touch them, punch them, do something, <laughs> and tell them, wait till you see me again. <laughs> Sharon and her pain on the shadow. But God knows you made her look like a sleeping prince. Yeah. Have put on incorruption, and this mortal have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Yes. Oh, death, where is thy sin? Wait, can I get me happy? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks. Somebody say thank you. Say it again. But thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory yeah. to Jesus Christ our Lord. Right. I'm going to stop right there because I'm going to be ready. Go, go. I can get happy on the last yeah, half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My beloved brother, be steadfast. John, after all of this is over, be steadfast. Unmovable or shining. Always abiding yeah. in the works of the Lord. Yeah. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I, 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 I see her, and to see her now. But a lot of folks think that when we get this far, it's all over from here. Uh, when you get, but you don't know your body. I understand why you think like that. But I my Bible tell me that there is another day coming. Uh -huh. I don't care if you're buried six feet beneath the dirt. And there are other folks on top of you. When the trump shall sound. Therefore, they may not know Jesus. They ain't going to stop me. But I'm going to be banging on the cross and let me out of here. Because I hear Somebody calling my name. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, when you hear Jesus calling, you won't have to get up. Uh, you can ask Lazarus. Lazarus was dead. Lazarus didn't have any choice. Amen. Jesus showed up four days later. And he said, you put the stone there, now you take it away. And, 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 and the reason why all of that went, took place was because the Lord is going to get some glory out of us. I wanted Sharon to get better because I wanted her testimony. Because I wanted God to get glory out of her testimony. But tonight, Sharon got all of y'all up in here tonight. Most of y'all that wouldn't come to 1403 or go to Bible Faith or any other church that's represented up in here tonight. Amen. But tonight, tonight you came to hear that there is more to this.
than right here. There is more to this than on Saturday when they plant her in the ground. But I want you to know there is no grave that can hold with the first trumpet sound. Uh -huh. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. Uh -huh.
to Mr. John, to my little Shante. Oh my God. You know, it's not by chance that we met one another, you know. Um, God just, he don't work like that. It's not by chance. It was destiny. God is amazing. He makes no mistakes. He makes no mistakes. I just want to thank you on behalf of this SO Funeral Services for entrusting the care of your mom, your angel, your daughter to us. I hope that we've done everything remotely possible to make this at the time in your life a little easier for you to be. You know, I can't return it to you. I can only hope that what we've done has made this difficult time easy. God is awesome. Worthy to be praised. Yeah. 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 At this time, we are afford you the opportunity to view the house where Shannon once lived. Yes, we are under time constraints. So please keep her and keep the family in prayer as they go off to their journey to Georgia. Keep them in your prayers when they return. Love on them. Pray. Continue to pray for them. Bless them with your words. Be there for them. Cook them some food, yes. some collard greens for her. <laughs> and me too while you're at it, because I'll be working at home, trust me. We thank you again for coming out, and God bless you all. God bless you. Thank you.
reached in the most proper place. We thank you again for coming out. God bless. Sharon Stewart, a vivacious woman of faith.